Hello, everybody. This is Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries of San Diego. Today's message is entitled, Learning to Lean on the Lord. We're coming from Psalms 37, verse 5, where it tells us, Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust Him, and He will help you. Family, I wanted to share with you one of the many lessons my mother would teach us kids in our early years with her. You see, family, I truly miss my mama and the many talks we had in my adult years. Even to this day, I reminisce about our poignant conversations we had about life, the many funny moments we had, her being mama even though I was a full adult. She would always worry about me like I was still a little boy. You see, I was her favorite. (laughs) Listen, I know my brother and sister would say something totally different, and I get it. You see, in my early adolescent years, she wasn't always so nice. She believed in the scripture that says, spare the rod, spoil the child. And oftentimes she would apply this proverb not only in her raising us, but she would often use the methods, these methods that she was brought up with. Yes, way back then, belts, switches, and in my case, the old Hot Wheel track, believe it or not. And yes, I know the times have changed. And for those who don't advocate Using this technique, I totally understand. (laughs) You have to understand the history behind this. Some of it was instilled in her family from the slave masters way back in the late 1800s. You see, using whips to discipline their slaves was a form of control. And these slave masters' ultimate goal was to send a message a permanent reminder to the slaves of their alleged inferiority and to assert themselves as white authority and superiority. And slave masters sought to inflict such excruciating pain during a whipping that the agonizing message reverberated throughout the entire slave community. And psychologically, this method appeared to be the answer in keeping things in check. But as time went on with my parents, they decided to educate themselves with the history of whipping. And by doing so, it created a change in their approach when it came to us. Thank God for Jesus. I myself used to raise my children in this same manner. Looking back now, I realize that teaching your children to live the right way is the best way and to provide for my children a vivid image to hold on to. You see, our goal was for them to grow and to understand right from wrong. Now listen, we didn't always get it right as parents, but we tried to lay a foundation that they could stand on. You see, I can remember one time when my mother was so frustrated with me. She, in her special way, opened the fourth and the 25th verse. She explained it this way. She said, Philip, if you love your children, you will correct them. If you don't love them, you won't correct them. If you live right, you will have plenty to eat. 
If you don't live right, you will go away empty. I love you, Philip. I do what I do because I love you. And I want for you to learn from God what he expects from you. He wants you to walk in the way of holiness. He wants you to do the right things when it comes to your behavior, your attitude. He wants for you to always lean on him when a decision has to be made and that you will always, always turn to him for all answers concerning your life. Hey guys, but let's be honest. I wasn't trying to hear all of that. I thought I knew more than they did. I wanted to walk in my own path, make up my own rules. I wanted to be free of instructions from anybody. And the only commitment that I was willing to make was just to me and me alone. <laughs> Listen, I didn't tell her this, mind you, but in my mind, I knew when I became grown grown, I was going to do things my way. And many of us have lived our lives with this kind of mentality. We question some of the things that they said were sin. Why can't I lie on my taxes? What's wrong with holding grudges? Why do I have to forgive? Why do I always have to take the high road, turn the other cheek? Really? What's wrong with having pride? Why pray? How's this going to help my current situation? This list is just a few questions we tend to talk about or think about, especially when we kind of have a path in mind to walk on. And the one many people within our culture embraces and acts out on is the phrase, do what feels good to you. Don't listen to anybody when it comes to what feels good to you. This kind of thinking shows you the type of person that you will become if you're not there already. And that's a person who lives in rebellion. And the Bible clearly points out that this type of person is in opposition to authority and to following God's standards and precepts. You see, rebellion always begins in the heart. Rebellion against God's authority was humanity's first sin way back in the Garden of Eden. And it continues to be our downfall, which is so unfortunate. <clears throat> our sinful natures do not want to bow to the authority of others, even God. We want to be our own boss. And that rebellion in the human heart is the root of all sin. And Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, For everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. And for the unbeliever, this message of hope is for you. You have to unlearn this spirit of rebellion. And learn to only that the only way to experience life in its fullness is to lean on the Lord by accepting him into your heart. And the Bible states in Romans chapter 6 verses 12 through 23 and Romans the 10th chapter verses 9 through 10. So starting at verse 12 of Romans chapter 6, it states, you must not give sin a vote in the way you conduct your lives. Don't give it the time of day. 
Don't even run little errands that are connected with that old way of life. Throw yourselves wholeheartedly and full time. Remember, you've been raised from the dead into God's way of doing things. Sin can't tell you how to live. After all, you're not living under that old tyranny any longer. You're living in the freedom of God. Verse 15 echoes, So since we're out from under the old tyranny, does that mean we can live any old way we want? Since we're free in the freedom of God, can we do anything that comes to mind? Hardly. You know well enough from your own experience that there are some acts of so-called freedom that destroy freedom. Offer yourselves to sin, for instance, and it's your last free act but offer yourselves to the ways of God and the freedom never quits. All your lives, you've let sin tell you what to do. But thank God you've started listening to a new master, one who, whose commands set you free to live openly in his freedom. I'm using this freedom language because it's easy to picture. You can readily recall, can't you? How at one time, the more you did just what you felt like doing, not caring about others, not caring about God, the worse your life became and the less freedom you had. And how much different is it now, as you live in God's freedom, your lives healed and expansive in holiness. As long as you did what you felt like doing, ignoring God, you didn't have to bother with right thinking or right living or right anything for that matter. But do you call that a free life? What did you get out of it? Nothing you're proud of now. Where did it get you? A dead end. But now that you found you don't have to listen to sin tell you what to do and have discovered the delight of listening to God telling you, what a surprise, a whole healed, put together life right now with more and more of life on the way. Work hard for sin your whole life and your pension is death. But God's gift of real life, eternal life, delivered by Jesus, our master. People of God, Listen, it doesn't matter how deep a hole we've dug ourselves or how little time we have remaining to redeem ourselves. Once we learn to lean, to depend on Jesus, and to move away from the grips of sin, we can discover life in its fullness. We've decided to move towards a position where not only eternal life awaits us, we've been given the greatest opportunity to experience life in its fullness. God writes the required check, however large it needed to be, to redeem us. And Jesus has, in fact, done this on the cross. He has paid no further payment is required because it was at the cross where we 
first saw the light and the burden of our heart rolled away. It was there by faith we received our sight and now we are happy all the day. And Romans chapter 10 verses 9 through 10 states that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it's with your mouth that you confess and are saved. You have to understand, people of God, several things happen when you trust in Jesus to save you. The first happens when you confess that Jesus is Lord. And this confession shows that you understand, fully understand that there is no other way to be reconciled to God the Father. In the book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 12 says, Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. It's by the name of Jesus, people of God. This is a crucial component in leaning on the Lord. Giving your life to him, your will to him, surrendering all to him, being fully committed to him. And as Psalms 37 verse 5 said, commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. Commitment is what makes the difference in our lives. Committing our lives to God in everything that we do brings about the help that we need in order to be successful in life because being a good person cannot save you being baptized cannot save you going to church on a regular basis cannot save you only Christ can save you by confessing this you are trusting in him alone to justify you and bring you into a wonderful fellowship with God. You now are placing all your hope in Him. Him will never, ever be put to shame. Now listen, for the believer now, we need to apply God's principles and standards on a daily basis in order to receive God's blessings over your life. And there's an old spiritual song that connects the dots that leads us on the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And this song I used to sing way back in the day when I was in the choir at Paradise Baptist Church. And The name of the song is entitled, We've Come This Far by Faith. The words go like this, We've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. He's never failed us yet. Oh, 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 I can't turn around. We've come this far by faith. And the verses in this song gives us the opportunity to learn and to lean on the Lord because it says, don't be discouraged with troubles in your life. He'll bear you, he'll, he'll bear your burdens and move all discord and strife. Just remember the good things he has done. Things that seem impossible. Oh, praise him for the victories he has won. 
And then lastly, lastly, it says, just the other day I heard a man say he didn't believe in God's word. But I can truly say that the Lord will make a way because he's never failed me yet. So listen, people of God, let, let's count the ways to learn and to lean on the Lord. In this song, it says we've come this far by faith. Faith in God, faith in his word has brought all of us to a place where we witnessed his power, his presence, always covering us. Even when we couldn't see no way out and our faith in God gave us the confidence in the Lord that no matter what appeared to be impossible, an impossible obstacle to overcome, only God changed the narrative and created victory for us. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, the, 50, the 15th chapter in the 57th verse, it says, But thank God for letting our Lord Jesus Christ give us the victory. 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter in the 7th verse says, For we live by faith and not by sight. And because we live in faith, even during hard times are swirling all around us, we know within ourselves our faith in the Lord will carry us through every event that appears to be too difficult, to be too daunting, to be above our abilities. What we do is we lean on the solid rock, and this rock is Christ Jesus. Leaning on the Lord, we don't lean on foreign objects that have no stability. We don't nestle in places where we wind up trapped by the snares and schemes of the enemy. We certainly don't lean or rely on sources that are not reliable and have zero credibility. We lean on the Lord for all matters concerning our daily walk with him and for him to give us clear direction to make sure we continue in our purpose. St. John chapter 6 verse 35 we, uh, echoes this truth that says, Jesus replied, he says, I am the bread that gives life. No one comes to me will ever be hungry. No one who has faith in me will ever be thirsty. When you learn and lean on his nourishment that comes from above, he is telling you today, you will never be hungry because in him we live and move and have our being. In him is the gift of life. And it's just like a person who daily practices proper nutrition. The person that's in good health naturally is not missing meals. They eat to live. And they hydrate themselves with things that quenches their thirst. And this is the same way Christ provides for us to live by. Walking by faith and leaning on the Lord. In this song, it says trusting in his holy word. You see, people of God, trusting is studying the manual. It's learning how he operates. Because when you put together something, whether it's a toy a bicycle, a bookcase. The company that issued these items provides instructions, step-by-step -step procedures to complete the task. And it's up to us, and it's up to the person to read these instructions from beginning 
to the end that are given to them in order to obtain success. It's the same way with God's holy word. When you learn and when you lean into his word, his thoughts, his directions, his instructions, you gain access to God to help you along your way, on your journey, heading you in the right direction and getting you to your destination that you were purposed for. And the commitment has to be there. The commitment has to be there. If you are committed to him, he will help you. He's promised that he will help you understand what he has for your life. Joshua, the first chapter, the ninth verse says, I've commanded you to be strong and brave. Don't ever be afraid or discouraged. I am the Lord your God, and I will be there to help you wherever you go. Psalms 119 verses 1 and 2 says, O Lord, you bless everyone who lives right and obeys your law. You bless, you bless all those who follow your commands from the deep in their heart. And when we put all of this together, family, we can hear the sound of learning and leaning on the Lord. Because as the song says, he has never failed me yet. Because obedience, faith, Trusted in his holy word gives us the assurance that the Lord is with us. But the key to all of this is Psalms going back to the beginning of our episode. It says, commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. Listen, everybody, your commitment matters. Your trust in him matters because he is with us. He is right there with you step by step. And if God is with us, as the Bible says, who can be against us? Family, when the temptation to use alternative solutions enters your heart, trust in the only one who has your best interest at hand. When the sin or sins like bitterness and anger and selfishness, envy, strife, greed, covetousness, conceit, desiring the praise of men, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life rears its ugly head, we need to lean on the Lord depend on the Lord. We need to surrender our will to his will because being under the right authority is the only way to go because the right authority will never harm you or desert you is why we need to lean on his priceless love. And this love came down to this world and sacrificed his life for the remission of our sins and to give us eternal life through Jesus Christ. So don't lean on empty promises that will lead you down a dangerous path and that will cost you your life. Learn to lean on Jesus simply by giving your life to him totally. And what I want you guys to know, it's never too late to change course. Make today, starting right now, a new day by surrendering your will to the Lord. I promise you, you will never be the same. Because learning to consistently apply this principle on a regular basis will keep you on the right path and assure you a bright 
and glorious future. Today or tonight, I want you to be encouraged and I want you to continue to keep shining. And thank you once again for tuning in to Full of Life Ministries of San Diego. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of your many blessings. We thank you for your passion for us, how you care so much about us. And all you're asking for us is to lean on you. When the pressures of life begin to overwhelm us, you want for us to lean on you, to lean on your word, to stand on your promises, and to act accordingly to act in confidence, knowing that you're going to give us the answers that we need in order to win in life. So I pray for every listener that's under the sound of my voice that you will bless them and that you will keep them and that you will forgive them of their sins and that you will continue to, to strengthen every person, every individual who is in a struggle right now. I pray, oh God, that those that are covered in darkness, that this message of hope will draw them away from the darkness into your presence, where there is fullness of joy. I pray, O oh God, for our nation, our world that continues to operate in an alternative way, using other methods and means and rebelling against your truth. Lord God, I pray that you will change their course and give them the opportunity to receive your goodness. Bless us this day and every day, oh God. And we thank you for your word today. You've given us more than enough in order for us to overcome the temptations that are in this world. Thank you for all that you have done and that you will continue to do. So we ask all of these blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, listen, everybody. This is Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries of San Diego. I hope that you enjoyed that episode entitled Learning to Lean on the Lord. We are here for you, and we're grateful to God that you tune in each week to receive this message of hope and that it will not just be a message that you just hear, but that you will apply to your everyday lives. And so we're grateful to God for all that uh, he has blessed us with. And so if you need any kind of information, if you need prayer, if you need some resources to help you along your Christian, Christian walk, don't hesitate to email us at fulloflifesd at gmail.com. Once again, email us full of life sd at gmail.com you can follow us on instagram you can follow us on twitter you can follow us on our youtube channel so please connect with us we want to continue to send out this message of hope around the world so share um subscribe to our youtube channel let somebody know that there is a better way to live their lives. Once again, this is Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries of San Diego. Guys, we love you with the love of Christ. Pray for us as we pray for you. And let's continue to share this message of hope around the world. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. And guess what? I'll see you here back at Full of Life Ministries of San Diego. Take care.